Hey, so I'm here with a party system in Madame Jojo's in Soho in London, and it's been one hell of a year for you guys, to my knowledge. How, how would you say 2010 went for a party system? It's kind of an experimental. We, we had a lot of time off to regroup and think about what we wanted to do next. Wrote a lot of songs. Um, it's kind of like a breathing year, almost. Yeah, because before that, we were on tour for like seven years. Yeah, just 700 stop. years. <laughs> it was at least 100, for sure. Yeah. And I'm sure we realized we lost a member as well. Yeah, what was it like losing Jesse uh, from the Empire System group? It's definitely a bummer, but it was one of those things, you know, it was everybody's on good terms. It was for the best. He, w he was getting a little unhappy, and he wanted to do his own thing, and it kind of worked out. You know what I mean? We, we still were friends with him, hang out. There's no bad blood. But it was, uh, I think it was a lot easier than, than you would think it would be. Yeah, it was, it was like, pretty smooth. It was like a mutual breakup with your girlfriend. It's like... A mutual breakup with your girlfriend, that's how you're describing this. Yeah. Okay, so, so you can't sleep with him anymore, but, yeah. but you can still hang out, right? Yeah, yeah, you can still yeah. hang out once in a while, go to a movie, you know. Do you, do you get to see him often? Because is, is he in England now? He, Cause he, he just moved back to uh, Reading, our hometown, in America. Uh -huh. Not Reading in England. Yeah. Uh, like two months ago. And yeah, we've, we've seen, seen him a couple of times. Then, yeah. Would you ever let him walk straight back into the band, or would that be like a line that would never cross? You know, like when you sleep with your ex after you broke up with her and things go bad? Is that the same sort of analogy? I, don't know. I mean, yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, at this point, he's still doing his own thing, and I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I he's got some stuff lined up, actually. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think he's got a he's got a, a pretty full roster this year. I know he's got some spots in a in a band coming up, so you may see him again, just touring with somebody else. Awesome. So, you guys um, didn't. You released American Trash last year, which was a, a single, uh, available for download. But aside from that, it's been a pretty quiet year overall. I and mean, we've had and together, and then you've done some new songs live. But um, you recently came back from London, oddly enough, yes. to do the rest of the recording. How did that go? Good. It was really good. Uh, yeah, it was good. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it hard? Is it hard to write? Because like, do you write a song and then have to constantly go over and over and over again, and then do you get sick of it, or do you just like do one take and that's it? It's done. Uh, it's definitely, you work on it a lot. And honestly, the only thing I really did over here was like just mixed it. Like I didn't really do any like writing over here. It was just like taking what we had all done at the house and just taking that over here and just making it sound better, pretty much. And so, but yeah, it's definitely not a one take thing. It's like... Here's snare drums for four days straight. <laughs> I'll work on a kick drum that I probably won't keep for like four days. <laughs> So um, you've you've toured in America. You've done a handful of dates after you released the Trash album, uh, the Trash EP, and and how did it go? Because it was you guys were really quiet for a while. Obviously, everyone has to be quiet for a while to write to write um, an album. But from a fan point of view, it must it was quite scary in the sense that obviously 
you guys changed you guys went unsigned and then all of a sudden you lost Jesse and then we were as as did you ever think that your fans would just lose hope or were you kind of happy that they were there uh, you could kind of tell in like the forum presence that everyone was like a little like worried and like sad yeah. I think uh we all saw that video that David Bowman <laughs> made of uh Jesse it seems like he like died or something it's <laughs> but I mean it really it's weird to us because it doesn't seem that sad or weird or anything it just seems like a natural progression mm-hmm. and uh I kind of forget what the question was but <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know it's it was definitely like a good year for us to kind of get our heads on straight and know like exactly what we want to do okay so when you did do your first show since since obviously the whole rigmarole with that what was it like to get back on stage again? Oh, what was that show? Uh, was, that was uh, the Kegs and Eggs. Yeah, at the Denver. yeah. It was it was a little weird, but like, I mean, once you do anything enough times, I mean, you get used to it. Yeah, like well, yeah and we had time to shoes. practice. I mean, there was a good yeah. two months there before we even had a, a chance to get out and play. So we had a, a lot of time to make sure everything was right on. And we've played a bit since then. I mean, we've probably played I don't know twenty or thirty shows this past mm-hmm. year, even though. It's not Some like amazing normal. shows too. We yeah. we probably played the best show in America that we've ever played in Denver. It was, it was, was like that with three hundred three and yeah, the yeah, it was like yeah. ten thousand kids. Clip. Yeah, it was ridiculous, it's insane. It's, it's just nice to like when sometimes people might associate labels with popularity or how your band's doing, and for us it, that really hasn't made a difference. For, honestly, like our band's just been slowly progressing more and more with or without a label, and it it was nice to see like to play shows like that. And, and still see everybody stoked. Is that in part the fact that you guys are remixing, a lot of people are asking you now to remix, I mean, Katy Perry, 303, quite well-established names now, are still asking you guys to come back and do remixes for them. Do, do, do you find that that helps your sort of, like, as you are saying, the popularity grow and grow, or are, are you still quite set on the fact that it's this EP and, and the original album that make the impact? I think I th- anything helps. Yeah, really. it definitely yeah. helps. Just the presence in general, especially nowadays with the internet, like, you just have to be constant releasing something whether it be an internet video or you know, I mean just little stuff to be like hey we're still alive we're still it's, moving it's kind of crazy to look back you see, I've I just kind of realized the other day that we've actually released more remixes than actual songs at this point yeah, yeah you're right I didn't and thought about that not that it's a bad thing it's just kind of interesting to look back and I think I honestly think that plays a big part in it because it kind of like puts us not just as like they're a band but they're like a group of guys that do a lot of different cool things. When when it comes to remixing, I mean, who is in charge of remixing? Who does the uh, the remixing as a whole? Because uh, is it mainly is it, is it a group effort, or does just just one of you sit and remix a song? Depends, really. I mean, it, like it's most of these two dudes. Yeah. Uh, some Chris does, some I do, some both Chris and I do, some Jared starts, I'll finish, some Chris starts, Jared will get in the band and be like, let me get I'll in there, I'll finish. Come on, you know? <laughs> it's really just... It, the, the Fame remix actually came out because uh, Jared started a beat. That was, Thanks, dude. <laughs> I, got, I got your back, dude. Everybody does, like, parts. Like, it's not just, like, I've done some whole ones, Chris has done some whole ones. So it's like, it's... Even I guess no one, no one's in charge. We're yeah. all in charge. There is no boss. All you can one. definitely see like the, there's there's a progression though, and it, it's nice now with three people. You can definitely see everybody kind of settle into their job area, whether they realize it or not, which has been nice. And we've just I think we've just gotten more efficient as a band now that like if sometimes if Pat's running, like Chris will just be like, he doesn't have to stop. He can just go do a remix in another room mm-hmm. and just keep it going. And I might yeah. be out getting ready for you know, a show or doing all the online stuff mm-hmm. or whatever. It's it's definitely like much more of a. We're just a lot more efficient, just because we've been doing it longer. You know what I mean? You just get better at stuff as you go on. Yeah. Yeah.